This video is brought to you by EcoFlow. When it comes to heating and cooling our homes or producing hot water, heat pumps are proving themselves to be one of the most energy efficient ways to go. However, there's a category of material that could be used to efficiently produce hot water or to reduce your heating and cooling needs in your home or business. Phase change materials have high energy storage properties and can be easy to install and don't take up a lot of space. Are phase change materials a good option for our homes? Let's see if we can come to a decision on this. Keeping our homes comfortable with conventional HVAC systems requires a large amount of energy. In 2020, heating and cooling homes in the EU accounted for 62.8% of energy consumption in the residential sector. Heating water accounted for an additional 15.1%. In the same year here in the US, heating and cooling accounted for 46% of energy consumption by residential and commercial. The main energy source for heating is natural gas at about 46%, followed by electricity at 40%, propane at 4%, and fuel oil or kerosene at 4%. The numbers for hot water are very similar. As a result, Americans spend about $73 billion on heating our homes. Now, these traditional heating systems consume a high amount of energy and produce tons of greenhouse gas emissions. But what if there was a sustainable and economical technology? I looked at one greener alternative in my heat pump video, but there's another technology that caught my eye. Phase change materials may be another good option. Before we dive into the technologies that are currently available, let's take a step back to understand the main principles behind them. The basic concept of a PCM material is something you're already familiar with. And if you're not, I'm very concerned. And that's water. When water freezes, it changes phase from a liquid to a solid to becoming ice. When it melts, it changes phase back into a liquid state. Each of these phase transformations either absorbs or releases heat based on the material's heat or enthalpy of formation. Now, PCMs are no exception, absorbing or releasing heat during these phase transformations. In a nutshell, PCM are substances that absorb and release large amounts of latent heat when they change their physical state going between solid and liquid states. Now, for instance, during the day, a phase change material might melt because it absorbs solar heat. At night, the material releases the heat and becomes solid again. In the end, this is all about storing energy as heat and not electricity. Paraffin, sodium acetate, and hydrated salts are the most commonly studied and used materials for commercial phase change materials. So why is this important? Well, the thermal performance of a wide variety of products could be improved by taking advantage of PCM's key benefit absorbing and releasing large amounts of heat in a controlled way. Now, some of these products are available for your home right now. So let's start with hot water. You can convert excess electrical energy from renewable sources into heat and use PCMs as a short-term heat storage, essentially a heat battery. There's a really cool example of this that you can get for your home, but before I get to these heat batteries, there's another type of battery that you can get that you're probably familiar with. Today's sponsor, EcoFlow. I'm generally a big fan of EcoFlow's products because of how flexible and drop-dead simple their entire range of products are to use. Depending on what your needs are for energy storage, they most likely have something that will fit what you're looking for. If you need to store a large amount of power, you should check out the EcoFlow Delta Pro portable power station, which has a 3,600 watt hour capacity. It can be linked together with additional units to give you up to 10.8 kilowatt hours of energy storage. Need something a little smaller and lighter, maybe for camping or being prepared for an emergency? Check out the EcoFlow Delta Max, which is a more portable version of the Delta Pro, but at 2016 watt hours, it's no slouch, and it can be linked together with two additional units for a total of 6,048 watt hours. My video editor lives in an area that experiences a lot of blackouts from bad weather, so his Delta Max is helping him with that. And I haven't even touched on the accessories like solar panels, remote monitors, and even smart electric panels. Check out the link in the description below, and thanks to EcoFlow and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now, one good example of the heat battery comes from a Scottish company called Sunamp, which has developed a product containing a heat exchanger and phase change cells meant for hot water. It's called the Thermino. Their products are essentially batteries that store heat instead of electricity, which acts a lot like a tankless water heater from a user's point of view. It's just without the flames. Sunamp's system is compatible with a wide range of energy sources, including heat pumps, solar PV, and boilers, which are what add the heat into the system to be stored into the phase change cells. The material in the cell turns from a solid to a liquid as they store the heat. When you turn on the water in the kitchen or the bathroom, cold water flows into the heat exchanger, transferring the stored heat from the phase change cells into the water, which causes the gel in the cells to solidify as it cools. As I mentioned, it's very similar to a tankless water heater because it's heating at the time of use. It's not very efficient to hold 40 gallons of water at a set temperature, like in a traditional water heater tank. This hot water battery is four times more compact than a traditional hot water tank and has far less heat loss. According to the company, the hot water battery can save up to 1,000 kilowatt hours a year. However, there are some caveats. If SunEmp's hot water battery will be powered by solar, you have to take into consideration where it's installed. 
Now, Cinem does have case studies for how the system performs. In one case, a two-bedroom house with two people changed the conventional system over to the Sunamp system. There were heavy hot water users and took two baths in the morning and in the evenings, which is a lot of baths, but anyway. They saved 59% in energy use and 56% in cash, which was about 602 pounds or about $725 per year. For cost comparison, there's some data from the UK. The Sunamp's Thermino 150E with a heating power of 2.8 kilowatts and a 15 liter per minute flow rate costs about 1,945 pounds plus VAT. Including installation, the price increases to about $3,245 plus VAT. On the flip side, a conventional water heater such as an electric combi boiler with a similar capacity of 3 kilowatts and 12 liters per minute flow rate costs about 2,370 pounds, including the VAT. The total cost with the installation and accessories ranges from 3,170 to 3,670 pounds. When you add in the VAT, which I believe is about 5%, Sunamp becomes a little more expensive, but the benefits are seen over time since a conventional water heater loses about 1.3 kilowatt hours of heat per day, while Sunamp only loses about 0.74 kilowatt hours of heat per day. That's almost 50% less. That's gonna add up a lot over time. Now, another type of hot water battery that's been developed from the Science Foundation Ireland Research Center for Energy, Climate, and Marine, which is a 300 liter hot water thermal energy storage tank with a PCM paraffin bed. The system can store solar energy for later use. The way the system works is that water flows across a solar water heater and then onto an encapsulated PCM bed in a hot water thermal energy storage tank. During periods of high solar irradiation, the hot water reaches the melting temperature of the solid PCM, which causes it to melt. When the solar radiation is lower or non-existent, like in the afternoon or at night, the water gets colder, which causes the PCM bed to transfer heat to the water, maintaining a consistent water temperature. And the group found promising results. For a single solar collector integrated with a PCM bed in a hot water tank, hot water with a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius can be maintained for seven hours of operation. However, this product was only tested at lab and pilot scale, but the results do show the potential of integrating a PCM bed with a solar water heater. Now, PCMs aren't just about heating water. They can also be used to supplement heating and cooling your home when combined with an HVAC system. A PCM can be applied as a thermal coating. So with this idea in mind, the company Phase Change Solutions, or PCS, developed what they call the BioPCM. One product that the company offers for their residential thermal management is the Energy Blanket. Their BioPCM is sandwiched between two rugged multi-layer films. The resulting blanket is tear-resistant, long-lasting, and is rated to maintain its thermal performance for over 100 years. The idea is to place it above drop ceilings, roofs, or a staple to exposed wall studs in retrofits or new construction. They also have a two by two rigid panel called the energy panel. Bet you couldn't see that one coming. Now when room temperatures increase to uncomfortable levels, the PCM absorbs excess heat, helping to cool the room and reduce the need for mechanical cooling. As the room's temperature drops, the stored heat is released back into the room, helping to warm and maintain a comfortable temperature like at night. And this phase change process can help with temperature management for homes basically smoothing out the temperature variation over the course of a day, which in turn reduces the demand on your HVAC system and energy consumption. So how much? Well, it's been used in over 1,000 commercial buildings, so there's a lot of information on the potential savings. It reduced HVAC power consumption by 25 to 35%, runtime by 15 to 20%, and cycling frequency by 20 to 25%, depending on building type, orientation, age, and a whole bunch of other factors. For a building of 25,000 square feet, the energy blanket can save up to 81,000 kilowatt hours of electricity, avoid 57 metric tons of CO2 emissions, and provide over $8,000 per year of energy savings. Again, that's for commercial buildings, not homes. Now, at a cost of $4.50 per square foot, PCS says that the return on investment takes less than four years. The Texas-based company QE Platinum is manufacturing PCM insulation with the same principles as PCS's energy blanket. QE Platinum is a multi-layer film with a foil surface to supplement traditional insulation methods with PCM. This PCM lays on top of the existing insulation in your attic or on top of the suspended ceiling tiles. Once it's installed, QE Platinum will immediately begin to increase the thermal efficiency of the space that it's in so you stay comfortable while your HVAC runs less. Now, the benefits include a 20-year life expectancy and reduced energy consumption and carbon emissions. We're talking about a potential 20% energy savings. Now, PCMs can be made non-toxic, biodegradable, low or no flammability, and even be made from bio-based sources like QE Platinum's PCM. When it comes to the insulation supplement PCM products, they also have the benefit of not needing electricity to function. So during a blackout or mechanical failure of your HVAC system, you still get the benefits of the PCM. However, PCMs do have some drawbacks. 
the insulation supplement products typically only work well in the specific temperature ranges because they needed enough of a temperature swing to charge and discharge the stored heat. On top of that, while some of these products can show a good return on investment, they're more expensive up front than traditional home insulations. While typical insulation materials such as rigid foam cost about 25 cents to $1.40 per square foot, pandemic pricing aside, PCM insulators cost about $3.50 per square foot, so it's about two and a half to 14 times more expensive than other conventional home insulation. Another challenge for PCM adoption is the lack of awareness regarding the benefits of using these materials for energy storage, as well as government regulations and subsidies to make the technology more accessible. If you'd like to learn more about the ins and outs of these insulations, I'd strongly recommend checking out Belinda Carr's video on them. She has an amazing YouTube channel about building science and products just like these. There are a few technical challenges with insulation PCMs. While different blends of material can yield different phase transition temperatures, there is still a concern that using a particular PCM means only setting your thermostat at one temperature. In other words, for the full energy savings to be realized, you shouldn't adjust the thermostat or else you'll waste the energy heating and cooling the thermal mass of the PCMs and they're absorbing and releasing heat rather than heating or cooling the room effectively. Now, finding the perfect temperature is not as simple as mixing different materials either. One of my copy editors for these videos has a background in material science, and he pointed out that phase diagrams that plot composition on one axis and temperature on another show where materials are solid, liquid, or in a pasty in-between phase. Eutectic compositions are compositions that transition from solid to liquid directly, and non-eutectic compositions go from solid to a paste to a liquid. Now, each of these have their own thermal advantages and disadvantages, and can make it difficult to find an optimal composition for a specific transition temperature. Now, another problem is that PCMs are heavier than traditional insulation. At first glance, it may not seem like a problem, but consider that they must be attached somehow. And unlike regular insulation, they can't simply be stapled to the joists or studs haphazardly, since the PCM cells shouldn't be punctured. Also, the PCM shouldn't sag away from the wallboard or it will lose its effectiveness. Having said that, with proper installation and following the manufacturer's guidelines, you can see impressive results. Now, PCM is a growing market with expectations to grow from $477 million in 2021 to 1 billion by 2026. As for the price of the products themselves, we can expect to see the prices drop in the future as companies join the market, manufacturing scales up, and new research and advances are developed. And as an example of that, the price of salt hydrite, which is used in some PCMs, has been dropping recently. And the use of bio-based PCMs presents a less expensive alternative to paraffin-based PCMs. Now, obviously your mileage is going to vary with all of this because it depends on your specific needs and goals, as well as where you live. But it's exciting to see more options like this hitting the market and making our homes more energy efficient. I'm currently building a new net zero home and would love to have it integrated something like Sunamp's heat battery into my system, but it's not available in my area yet, and I'm already going to have a very efficient hot water setup linked to a ground source heat pump. There's so many options and directions that you can choose from when designing what works best for you. It can make your head spin, but stay tuned because I'll be publishing a bunch of videos on my home build. So are you still undecided? Would you want any of these phase change products for your home? Jump into the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here. And thanks to all my patrons for your continued support. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.